Okay, so you just explored AWS and you also explored the SETI at home project. While they're very different, they both are a form of high performance computing. Um, so SETI at home was, you know, your personal computer you can lend to um, use to, to analyze the extraterrestrial signals. And the AWS, you could see that the NFL was using that and it's more of a centralized like um, computer bank. And to get an idea as to what that looks like physically, um, we can look at a picture like this. So um, each of these racks are probably a little bit taller than a person. And you can see these are sort of like white cables here to get an idea of the scale here. And they're all interconnected and they're usually um, liquid cooled or, um, or air cooled somehow um, because they're producing um, so much heat from the computer. So when you're doing something on AWS or when you're um, streaming something from YouTube or saving something onto Google Drive, um, it's probably going onto one of these types of systems. Um, and there's things like this all over the country um, and all over the world that store your data um, and deliver content to you. Um, so when we want to think about, okay, we have all this high performance computing, um, we're going to think about applications for that now, but let's think about sort of the future of high performance computing. Uh, but before we think about the future, we have to think about the past. So if we think about Moore's Law, um, this is from Wikipedia. Um, Moore's Law is the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles every two years. Okay, well what does that mean really? So transistors are really the heart of any computer. And so that the number of these little transistors in a really dense circuit or really dense computer chip you can think of doubles about every two years. And so what are the implications of that? Well, if we look on the bottom is years, right? On the left hand side, this is big. This is kind of like another um, factor that you can take into account with Moore's Law. Instead of thinking about how many transistors you can fit on a chip, I mean, that's okay, but let's think about it in another way. Let's think about how many calculations per second per $1,000, and that's what this y-axis is here. Okay, so we have the calculations per second per $1,000. And so what this is doing, too, is this is actually what's something called a log scale. We've seen this before, right? So it looks like a straight line progression, right? But let's look at what the scale is. This is 100, so 10 to the 2 calculations. This is 10 to the 4 calculations, which is um, 10,000. Then we just keep adding, um, you know, we just keep adding 100 times that. So each one of these steps is 100 times the one before it. Um, so that's what's called an exponential growth. So if you had a, um, a sort of graph like this without the, um, the scale like this, if it was just a regular scale, it would look something like this. Okay, so it would start slow and boom, pop up at the end. And then the, when it starts popping up at the end, um, it can go really fast, and we'll see an example of that as well. So the idea is that people have predicted for a long time that this is just going to keep going up and up and up into the future. So let's think about how that might work. So if we, this is sort of just a, the same chart, just a little bit extrapolated. So let's think about the implications of Moore's Law now. We still have the calculations per second per $1,000, but then we're going to put some other things on the scale on the right-hand side. And these are just estimates, but the idea is that one insect brain could do um, this many calculations per second. And then one mouse brain, one human brain, and that's my kid, but that's okay. This is hashtag coronavirus, right? Um, so then we have one insect brain here, one mouse brain, one human brain, and then all human brains on this axis. So if we keep following this trend, and these dots are sort of the same dots we saw, on the blue dots we saw from the last thing. If we keep following this trend, you can see very quickly by 2040 or 2060, hum, uh, computation per $1,000 is similar to a human brain or all human brains um, in, in the not too distant future. This is pretty crazy. I mean, this is taking past data and extrapolating, right? So there's arguments for and against this. Um, the arguments against are that, you know, we're 
making these computer chips with silicon right now and there's limitations we're running up against against silicon and we might not ever get there um but it's just a sort of crazy thought that, that some a lot of people do think that we will get this calculations the other people say saying that you can't compare just raw calculations to a human brain there's more um there's more to it than that um and so it's just an interesting thing to 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 think about about the implications of this so one more thing we can think about, um, just to show you another look at exponential growth, is this website here. It just gives you, I think it gives you a better look at it, really. So if we look at, it starts with this little dot in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. This is the growth of computing. And again, it's the calculations per second of the top of, of $1,000, right? The top $1,000 computer. And very, very quickly, it passes all of humanity. And then look, look at how big it grows after that. I think that's the really ridiculous part. If, the, if we're able to do the computing power and just keep doing, increasing raw computing capacity, that's how big it gets. So again, it's sort of just a way, if you think it exponentially, um, it can sort of be mind blowing um, if we keep on this path of raw computing power increasing. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully that opened up some eyes. Um, I think the main thing you want to think about as you're, you're going to have to reflect on this chart and what it sort of means for you. So thanks for watching.